This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. New York, 1964. I was born Marvin Gay Williams, one of the eight children to my parents. It's been said that the 60s was the best time in black American history, and in a lot of ways, it's not difficult to see why that's not too much of a stretch, especially when you have today to compare it with. Think about it. The 60s gave black folks leadership, the kind of leadership we still talk about today. Hell, the kind of leadership that resulted in national holidays and a new way to see our own value as a black person in America. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr., Muhammad Ali, and the Black Panthers. These are the legends that I remember growing up with and the names that filled the house, the streets, and the shape of our lives and struggles. In a lot of ways, my first home set the pattern for many of my earliest struggles and achievements, to say nothing of the underlying sense of how life was back then. I grew up on Legion Street in Brooklyn, right down the road from our school, PS 156. We lived in a brownstone. Our brownstone was three stories high, and every family knew one another. There were apartments on each floor within our brownstone community. There were eight of us living in our brownstone apartment in the back on the first floor. Mom, my brothers Harvey, Jeffrey, and Bradford, the baby, me, and my sister, Teresa. My dad worked in Long Island, doing his cooking show for a nice Jewish man but would come home on the weekends. The other families in our brownstone community included the Muslim family on the first floor. I went to school with their kids. On Sundays, I would sometimes go with them into the Harlem Mosque, where we would all sit together in one big room, all on the floor, no chairs or nothing, listening together to the message from a single jukebox. The single jukebox sat at the front of the mosque on an empty table. The jukebox, positioned like a pastor in other churches, was the only voice in the room. The message of Elijah Muhammad was delivered by notable persons like Malcolm X. I remember running down to the Muslim family's home when I needed to get away from my own family's craziness. I was young but inquisitive. Black folks would call me nosy. And I loved interacting with people. I remember loving to learn in school and also from people whose lives appeared different than mine. That's what struck me about the Muslim family. Their family was different than mine, and they always let me come over and stay a while. I remember I got my first ear piercing from a Muslim woman when I was just eight years old. Another neighbor was a karate teacher I called Mr. Kelly, and I remember being impressed as all hell with his abilities. It was so cool to know that he studied under and trained with Chuck Norris. My father once asked him to train my brother and me in karate. We would visit our new karate teacher and learn some techniques. I just remember it being fun to play with all of his equipment, or toys as I saw them. Living on Legion Street was a time where everyone was allowed to be in everyone else's business because it helped everyone stay safe. If a kid was in the middle of the street acting a fool, any neighborhood parent could come out and pull them by the ear, pop them with a switch they just grabbed off of the closest tree, and then take the kid to their parent, grandparent, aunt, or uncle to report they were being bad. Every kid on the block knew if a neighbor witnessed them being bad out on the street and brought them to their family, the punishment they had coming from their family would be twice the pain. They would get their ass beat once because they did something bad, and the second time because they embarrassed the family. Kids knew they were better off being good, or at least acting that way. The communities embraced each other, protected each other, watched out for each other, because typically, everyone was in the same or similar situation. Families with working or trying to work parents just trying to survive. For better or worse, some of the best lessons of my life went hand in hand with the hardness. The community was real back then. Every Sunday, like clockwork, the whole family would come out to gather on the stoop, 
like a family reunion.